two Karens meet in the park. This is a funny one. Let's end it with this one, right? So, um, obviously, racial relations in the US have uh, gone kapoopy over the last couple of days, um, which has kind of taken away a bit of the focus on COVID nineteen, which is a good thing, I think, in the in the you know in the long term because we've kind of exhausted all the talking points on COVID nineteen. We all know the pros and cons of it. I think we as a population just need to make informed decisions um, about our own personal safety and safety of our family and friends, and you know just take the necessary actions, the necessary next steps. There's no amount of information you can read now that's going to really change the course of what's going to happen uh, with the virus. It's either going to get better or it's not, but let's make the adjustments where you can. But the race relations in the US, woohoo, craziness. So two Karens got into a fight in a park somewhere in New York and it turned into this whole affair where it has resulted in one Karen losing her dog and losing her job. Effectively, if you're a Karen, you've essentially, your whole world's gone to shit in it because your dog and your job are the two forms of your identity. I'm sure if you would have went on that Karen's Instagram page, it would have been mad images of her and her dog and her at work with her work colleagues. So those two pillars of identity have been completely smashed away, right? And um, the story's pretty complex because the other Karen was a black dude, right? Um... But the, uh, the the reason why I say they're two Karens is because, you know, this fervent, this need to like pull out your camera phone in order to record uh, argument you're having with another adult in, the, in case someone says something egregious is really, really horrible to see. It's really, really unfortunate this situation exists anyway. Um, but let's quickly read the, uh, listen, watch actually the reportage on it and then we can comment a little bit on the story itself. Let it load up. Bumpity, 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 bum. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. My computer's a bit slow because I've got too many tabs open, I'm assuming. But let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, so there we go. It's coming now. Hopefully it loads. Oh, I've got way too many tabs open. I can, I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. Come on, son. Let's go. Load up for me if you don't mind. Come on, brother. There, there is an African-American man. I am in Central Park. He's recording me and threatening myself and my dog. You can't just say that, can you, brother? Come on, woman. Mayor de Blasio. Okay, let's go with it. Recording me and threatening my... There is... There is an African-American man. I am in Central Park. He's recording me. Yeah, let's, let's go back again. Let's intro that stuff. I feel so sad for her, man. I really do. So let's play that again. Let's go. So, um, let's go intro that again. So... Just introing it again for my video viewers because, you know, I kind of took a bit while for it to load up. If you listen to the audio podcast, I apologize for that as well for the gap in time. But essentially, two Karens go into a fight in New York. The, the story that makes it more interesting is that one, one, of, the, one of the Karens, uh, the figurative Karens, is a black dude. Um, what's really heartbreaking about it is that the other Karen, obviously, her entire life got torn to pieces because, number one, she's been accused of being a racist. Number two, her dog got taken away and she lost her job. So, you know, for sure, you know, the, these kind of Karens, their entire their identity is is basically formed around these things that they have, right? Whether it's a job or a dog. So for those two main pillars to be pulled from underneath her, it must be catastrophic, especially during, especially during coronavirus lockdown, where everyone's mental health is sort of suffering and floundering due to the prolonged period of time we spent indoors. So you can only imagine what this is doing to her, um, especially with her family and friends probably, you know, icing her out and not wanting to be associated with her and shit. It's going to be a really lonely time for this woman. But in general, it probably can be serve as a good learning, uh, learning, a good learning decision, a good learning story, a good point of learning, right, for people in general about how we conduct ourselves in public with other adults, right? This need to always record arguments in the hope that someone says something egregious so you can kind of go, aha, I got you, right? Or just to protect yourself in some regard is really, really egregious and super, super, super immature and it's really unbecoming of an adult, right? You should be able to have an argument and have a disagreement and not like somebody in public and not have it to be resort to you having to explain your yourself and write some mad long explanation of why you're sorry it's similar to the Alison Roman story right with her beefing with Chris, Chrissy Teigen I didn't really read the whole thing but essentially she was a bit jealous she seems like she was a bit jealous and a bit envious of the fact that um the woman that the Japanese lady that does all the really minimalism minimalist uh interior design stuff and Chrissy Teigen were getting all these deals she was kind of envious of the fact that she wasn't getting the same amount of looks 
in the co in maybe the in that level of publicity maybe she wants to be a bit more famous i don't know but it's okay for her to be jealous and envious of her peers is it i don't know people that operate in her circle in her sphere um of expertise and they've gone you know they're probably achieving better things than what she has or maybe they're a bit more richer or they have you know beautiful kids i don't know whatever it is that she's jealous of you're allowed to be jealous of other human beings that are doing the things that you want to do it's only when it kind of turns nasty and it becomes a vindictive thing and you're stopping opportunities when it becomes like you know okay relax but you should be allowed to be up upset that someone's getting an opportunity that you're not getting it's up to you what you do on the other side of the thing that's most important but her having to explain herself and write a long essay about why she's sorry and it be turned into something about her attacking people of color and she's not respecting women and shit it's like come on let's relax your horses same with this you're allowed to have a disagreement with somebody in public and it not turn into them suddenly having to lose their job because you know they said something mean during during the whole interaction an African-American man, I am in Central Park, he is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. Hey, if you have been on social media today, you have likely I guess seen... That that the one thing that kind of takes away everything I said in the beginning there is the fact that she said an African-American man, right? So she obviously tr was weaponizing that phrase in the hopes that it would scare the guy away because she knows what the connotations are when police arrive to a situation involving a pale white lady and a big black dude. That's the part of it that's really egregious, right? It's like, do you really need to go to that length? Even if you feel threatened by the guy, right? Even if you're having an argument, which I'm sure he, I think he detailed previously to a story that they had a, a back and forth because she let her dog off the leash that was disturbing the birds that he was watching because I think that part you can watch birds and shit he had his binoculars on so the birds are flying away it was annoying him and you don't have to have your dogs off the leash he politely asks her or doesn't politely ask her they have a little bit of a back and forth and he somehow in um insinuates that if she doesn't move she won't if she doesn't go away he won't she won't like the concept what happens next and she's like well, what do you mean right suddenly goes to that kind of victimhood like woman thing right where it's like you you talk spicy the moment it gets kind of physical you kind of retreat which is fine isn't it but girls tend to do that when they argue with boys Number one, a guy shouldn't be arguing with a man anywhere in the park. You should just be able to walk away. Number two, the woman should be, if she's that scared about a big black dude, she should walk away too because, you know, essentially he could sit on you and you could kind of, you know, snuff the light of yourself and your dog in a couple of minutes. Um, but the fact that she used the phrase a black guy, she, I, didn't say, I don't think she said big black guy, but an African-American guy is kind of, you know, harassing me in the park. She knows what she's doing. And that's really agreed. That's the bad part of the story. It's like, she might not be, you know, she could be racist. She couldn't, who, who, I don't know who she is racist or not, but you can't go around threatening black people with the police because you know what might happen. You know, that is ridiculous. This, a Central Park confrontation went viral, netting more than 25 million views in it. A white woman appears to call police, accusing a black man of threatening her after he asked her to put her dog on a leash. Mayor de Blasio sounded off too, calling it, quote, racism, plain and simple. News for Miles Miles chill out. It's not racism. We don't know if she's racist. Let's not throw that term around there. I mean, that's that's the annoying part of it. Just like cheapening, you know, cheapening racism. Like, the, we is she a is she a bitch? Yes. Is she annoying? Yes. Is she being hysterical? Yes. But is she a racist? We don't know nothing about this woman. Nothing at all. Nothing. This whole interaction is nonsense. Like, she, they should just both walk away as adults and say, "Cool, let's live to fight another day." Is this really necessary during this time that we're living in now for you to have an argument? Number one, the dork trying to watch birds right in the middle of the day. Number two, the woman um, nearly half strangling her dog to sleep in the park because she's arguing with some dude she doesn't know exists. Like, I don't understand how people have that kind of level of energy for strangers. Like, no, normally. Usually you get angry and egregious with people when they cut you. You've, there's like a social slight, right? Someone pushes in front of you in a queue or someone gets an order. Yeah, I don't know. Someone, I don't know. Some of those kind of things you, you're justifiably angry at, right? Somebody is able to get a drink of the bartender before you or something, right? But having these interactions with a random stranger, you know, based upon you not having your dog on a leash shouldn't really elicit that kind of reaction. You shouldn't get that hysterical about it. It should just be about, okay, whatever, fuck you. Okay, you know, you know, you fuck you, no, you fuck you. And then you both kind of walk off angry and pissed and you both have a bit of a, you know, a bit of a moan about it on social. But you keep it moving. No one's recording videos or anything. It's just that. It's just an interaction that you can kind of moan about and bitch and moan about with your friends at the bar or on Instagram stories one day. That's it. There's an African-American man threatening my life. Tonight, the woman who called your police life, on really? a black man in Central Park after an argument about her unleashed dog has been fired by the investment firm where she worked. It was unacceptable. Amy Cooper apologized for her behavior last night in an exclusive interview with News 4. In a tweet, 
Cooper's employer, Franklin Templeton Investments, Fuck, saying they don't tolerate so bad racism of any kind. Bad for Please don't come close to me. The incident started after bird watcher Christian Cooper asked Amy Cooper, no relation, to leash her dog in a wooded area of the park. And isn't it even more L's that they have ever, even more LOL that they have the same first the same surname? They both come from points of privilege, right? Both live in New York, both affluent in some respects, highly educated people who have got themselves involved in some nonsense argument that's put a blemish on both of them, right? Because there's some, there, of course, there's a small segment of the population that are still like, they're like, oh, we got the racist. Yeah, well, we got her out of here. But it's like, really and truly, have you? Even if she's racist, is this gonna, is this gonna suddenly make her like black people? I don't think so. Right, this is probably going to make her hate the people even more, which is the funny part of it. And for the guy too, what you're a hero because you snitched on some woman because she decided like, really, is this what you're? Is this what you've been going to be known for? And he seems like a really smart dude. I think he went to Harvard or some shit. He writes for Marvel. Those are some really cool accomplishments. But to have that as be part of your legacy that you somehow shamed a woman into getting her losing her job and her dog because she threatened you with the police, like, come on. To seek refuge. Video going viral with Mayor Bill de Blasio weighing in, calling it racism, plain and simple. People in the ramble today uh, agree. People need to be especially concerned about having uh, civil discourse. Why is he talking about that? Standing to the side in that regard. Imagine him like Glenn O'Brien. Why did he stand on the phone? New Yorkers are funny. In these times. Cooper told News 4 he spoke out because he's cognizant of what's happened in the past when police are called on unarmed black men. We live in an age of Ahmed Arbery where... Oh, this guy's a weapon and he should just walk away and go home. But hey, what do I know?